So I wanted to make sure we all were on the same page. I'm a lesbian. I'm a lesbian. Just wanted to make sure we all knew that, right? Sometimes I say I'm gay, sometimes I say I'm queer, but after a long battle with internalized homophobia and cultural stigma, and just in general, a lot of a fear of this scary word, I realized I'm a lesbian and I'm not afraid to say it. That's not the same for a lot of queer people, especially queer women, because there is a lot of cultural shame about being a lesbian, let's be honest. It doesn't help when queer celebrities come out and publicly shame the word lesbian as though it's a dirty word or something or someone to be afraid of. You might be thinking, Liz, are you about to critique Joja Siwa? Yes, here I am about to critique Joja Siwa. And I'm sorry, but I'm not. Because folks, I think we need a chat about it. I think we need a chat about the fact that queer celebrities publicly shame lesbians and why that is, why they're not taught queer history, and what what's the conversation that could be had? Because it's not just our beloved Joja Siwa. There are a lot of queer celebrities who seem to just throw lesbians under the bus. So let's, let's talk. Let's go, here we go. Rounding the corner, the bunch of left birds. Here we are, Manhattan, can you handle it? If you know me, you might hear me say the word gay or something. I'd much rather say gay than lesbian. Look at those romantic saps. Yeah, they may have love, but you know what we are, that they are not flawless. <laughs> not only that, but I don't know if I'd kick it with a group of lesbians anyway. Now, I do want to briefly shout out Jojo Siwa for a great thing, because Jojo really highlighted lesbian stereotypes, I think, in a very healthy way. Jojo explained in a recent interview that she loves dressing in colorful clothes and her signature bows, adding... You can be queer and be girly. Say it louder for the people in the back. You can be queer and you can be girly. Some people say she controversially added, why is this a controversy? This is how the article was written. I would never have written that this, that this was a controversial ad addendum to Joja's thought. But Joja said, I think that's a thing. It's a lot of times lesbians are taken to be masculine. If you're a lesbian, do you want to be a boy? That's not a case. There are plenty of very feminine lesbians. Joja recently cut her hair and a lot of people seem to attack her as turning into a masculine looking lesbian. Some of the negativity in this article and her interview could be coming from her short haircut because yes, people treat you differently when you cut your hair short. I can attest to that personally. I think there is a stigma to it. There is some sort of public statement. I did get called a, a gay ass walking down the street after I cut my hair and I got a septum ring, so. And then before then I never was queer coded unless I had a girlfriend at the time that I was literally holding hands with in public. I never got queer coded. I never got slurs thrown at me. I never got attacked publicly. But at the same time, I'm not masculine. I don't have very masculine energy. I think I have Olivia Pope energy, but like Olivia Pope lesbian energy. I haven't watched the L word. Maybe I would know of a Olivia Pope L word lesbian, but I don't. Olivia Pope is who I associate myself with the most. <laughs> I do think that there is a stereotype that lesbians all have sh short hair, we're man eaters, we hate men, and the minute you cut your hair you must be a lesbian. So there is a negative stereotype with how lesbians look more masculine. And I am so grateful for Joja shouting that out, saying you can be colorful, you can be girly, pink nails, ra light rainbows, light pastel colors, all those very feminine things and still be a lesbian. There's so much more deeper bias that goes beyond lesbians are masculine. There's a bias that lesbians are not just masculine, but that they're inherently dirty, that we're inherently, you know, the evil shrews of the gay movement. It sounds like internalized misogyny to me. Where does this narrative come from? Because I tell you, it did not come out of thin hair. There is a deeply entrenched history and misogyny and who lesbians are and why we're framed in this very negative light. Joja is definitely not the only celebrity dissing on lesbians. I've included a lot of quotes in this video from other queer celebrities, and I think we should point out that Joja is not even the worst person. <laughs> like, was it, Joja's words are not even the worst words that have happened. I want to say I say this with all the love in my heart, and I hope that someone's able to sit down and have a great conversation about queer history with Joja and that we can all get on the same page and just love each other, that we can respect and honor every letter in the LGBTQ alphabet.
But let's talk about the L in the alphabet. My picture fell out of frame. Can y'all see the cool picture? I wanted to show it off. That is from my childhood. I just want y'all to know that I was always gay and didn't know it. I had picked lots of very feminine pictures like that. And I really wanted it to be in today's video to highlight lesbianism. But anyway, let's talk about lesbian history. So in many ways, the word lesbian has a deep history in being a slur. Let's be honest. Who wasn't called a lesbian as a baby gay and knew from the moment the words came out of a classmate's mouth that they were being bullied. Lesbian has been a slur in recent history in many ways in a lot of school situations, a lot of bullies, but it's not always been a slur. In fact, it has a deep history that I for one am very proud of. It comes from the island Lesbos in Greece from the very first sapphic queen, Sappho. The term sapphic comes from Sappho. She was a Greek woman who lived on this island with a lot of other women and she wrote poetry, beautiful poetry. She's the OG poetess. Is that how you say it? Poet. Why can't I just say poet? When you're talking love poetry, Sappho wrote it all. In fact, I believe she was contemporaries with Plato or Aristotle, one of those Greek fellows, but a lot more interesting because she was openly gay. Her poetry set the standard for female love, so thank you Sappho. Because of Sappho and the island of Lesbos, lesbian and sapphic became synonyms for queer woman, woman who loved other women, and today we include people who identify with womanhood in some way but are not women who also love people who identify with women who are not women, such as non-binary lesbian. Non-male bisexual people are sapphic. Let's just set the record straight here. Lesbianism, for most of history, was simply a term for women who loved women. Now, after the second wave feminist movement, lesbianism became a lot more than just a sexual orientation or a romantic orientation. It also became intertwined with a feminist movement. And feminists are not always the most popular people in the era of the civil rights movement in the 1970s in the cultural reshaping of sexuality in the American culture. Lesbian feminists were a slur. They were bra-burning, man-hating, communist lesbians gleefully planning the destruction of American society. Now, many feminists were not happy to be called lesbians. Looking at you, Betty Friedan. Betty Friedan actually wrote many articles denouncing lesbian feminists as hurting the movement. She felt that, they, that advocating for lesbian rights was hurting the feminist movement at large. I want to be clear, I do not hate Betty Friedan. Betty Friedan has a complicated is a complicated history for me because she did set back lesbian rights in trying to separate feminism from lesbianism. She didn't really succeed, but she did create a bias, a cultural shaming by feminists towards lesbians. Now, as much as I dislike Betty Friedan for this, she did call us a pretty cool thing. She called lesbians the Lavender Menace. We never would have gotten such an iconic name if it weren't for Betty Friedan hating us so much, being so lesbophobic, that she called lesbians the Lavender Menace. I mean, I should get a Lavender Menace, menace tattoo. I mean, it's just such an iconic term. So thanks for the lesbophobia. No thanks. But you know what I mean. Feminist lesbians did not take this lesbophobia sitting down. Political lesbianism became very counter cultural, it became very vital to the progress of the feminist movement. It became not just a sexuality, but a political identity. There was a lesbian manifesto about what lesbianism meant. I don't agree with this manifesto in all its forms. I don't even agree with the people who wrote it in everything 100% because I never agree with anyone as much as I admire them, even Olivia Pope, 100%. So they tried to redefine lesbianism as more a political as well as a sexual orientation. And I mean, the quote is pretty badass. A lesbian is the rage of all women condensed to the point of explosion. I appreciate it. I, I really do. I appreciate the definition, but that is not a lesbian because we're not just rage. <laughs> okay, we're much more than rage. Oh, I gotta take a breath. Um, because that, that was a lot of thinking. Now, there were valid, there are val very valid critiques of the lesbian movement, the political lesbian movement of the 1970s into the 1980s, because it was very <clears throat> white. It was very not welcoming of 
trans women or non-binary people, it could be very exclusionary to a certain kind of white, upper class, very educated lesbian woman. Not very welcoming to the black, queer, trans lesbian. I say all of those things with much respect and love to all of those people who identify as such. But the lesbian movement of the 1970s was kind of exclusionary. Thankfully, black lesbians, thank God for them, trans lesbians, all of those people worked super hard to reshape lesbians into being a more welcoming, all-encompassing community that welcomed bisexual people and people who existed outside of the very political, white, very educated lesbian woman. And I'm glad, I am glad lesbianism became more inclusive. And also I believe this inclusivity led to a lot more, led to a lot of good. It also, post-political lesbianism, you see a lot of community activism, which is really, really good because at the very, because as second wave feminism kind of, it didn't wrap up, but as it lost its cultural momentum with, let's face it, Phyllis Schlafly and the ERA fight and Ronald Reagan, there were other things to focus on. It kind of just lost momentum as some political movements do. We had the rise of the AIDS pandemic and lesbians became a huge factor in the care of men who had AIDS because many of their families and communities rejected them because of the cultural stigma towards AIDS and lesbians became the sisterhood who cared for men who had no one else to love them and be with them during their final hours because it was an endemic, was it endemic or pandemic? It was a disease that was killing thousands of gay and bisexual men. And I am very proud of our lesbian, not ancestors, I'm so old, just our lesbian heritage, that's the word, of people who became nurses and blood donors and family to patients who needed it during the height of the AIDS pandemic. And a lot of people say that the GLBT acronym changed to LGBT acronym in honor of the fight by lesbian women for gay and bisexual men. So much political, social fight for the victims of the AIDS pandemic was not only in combination with gay and bisexual men, but was lesbian women who became a society, who literally formed societies to help protect their family of gay and bisexual men. And I, I am so proud of that. I'm so proud to be a lesbian knowing that lesbian women like me have been out there fighting for our community. I think that's incredible. It just makes me, it makes me emotional. All of that beautiful history though, doesn't discount the fact that lesbian is still being used as a slur. To me, lesbian has a very similar history as the word queer, because queer is such a great word that encompasses so much of the community and many people but at the same time, it has a history as a stigma, as a slur, as a horrific word that was hurled at gay people and just you abused. Like AIDS was called a queer disease or the gay cancer. And many people were very uncomfortable with being called queer. Now it has been reclaimed. We want to respect those who still don't want to be called queer because of this, the nature of what that means to them. And at the same time, we wouldn't call queer publicly if someone called you, asked you, are you queer? Most people would not go in national public publications and say, oh, that's a dirty word that I don't identify as that because I've never met a group of queer people I like. Can you imagine saying that? Can you imagine? And yet lesbians are, a, it, nobody seems to really push back against the constant throwing under the bus the word lesbian endures, it really does. I also think there's an inherent misogyny to it because when you think of lesbian, men have sexualized it. Men think of it as women and men have created a slur out of it. Lesbian, P-O-R-N. They sexualize us when we walk down the street. They ask to hook up with us. Lesbians are constantly fetishized in both our existence and relationships, and it's really, really uncomfortable. Instead of pushing back against the sexualization, the fetish, fetish, 
when the fetus, fetish, I can't even say that word, it's actually uncomfortable. Now that is a gross word like moist. Let's say it. Fetish is a gross word. I'm gonna be controversial here. You make your own video telling me how I'm wrong. That's my personal opinion. Not attacking anyone with a fetish. But that is a gross word. Can we rename it to something else? Anyway, mainly my point here is no one... If you wouldn't throw someone under the bus for identifying with the word queer, why would you throw a lesbian under the bus for identifying with the word lesbian? Why do we welcome critiques of the term lesbian but instead claim know that we shouldn't critique any other letter in the LGBTQ alphabet. Is it misogyny? Is it the fact that lesbian is identified mostly with women in the cultural mind? Is there a double standard in how we treat lesbians versus other members of the community? If a lesbian were to make some of the same comments about bisexual people as many celebrities make about lesbians, we would rightfully call them out. If a lesbian said similar things about gay men and the word queer or gay, we would call them out, and rightfully so. And yet, lesbians are constantly thrown under the bus, called dirty, called scary, called mean, called too masculine or too feminine. We are called bitches. <laughs> the stigma exists and continues to be perpetuated by celebrities, excludes us from the same love and respect that other members of the community get in their identity. And it just kind of fucking sucks. I don't want to discount valid criticism of lesbians and the word lesbians because of the fact that it can be exclusionary to non-binary, genderqueer, and trans people and there is valid criticism there. I can't, I can't lie. I can't pretend there's not because there is. I really don't like the word lesbian. It upsets me. It probably has a lot to do with my gender identity. I feel female, but for some reason, when it comes to my sexuality, I like the ambiguity and the spectrum of words like gay and queer. Celebrities calling out exclusionary lesbians are not a problem. In fact, we should welcome that critique and uplift it. As lesbians, we should be open-armed and happy to love our non-binary family. We should uplift trans lesbians. We should be the first to call out TERFs because radical exclusion is exclusion and our community is not about excluding fellow members of our family. Non-binary lesbians have always been a vital part of the lesbian community. They, they didn't always have the term non-binary, but many lesbians have said that they don't identify with womanhood. Womanhood is not the defining mark of being a lesbian. Being a lesbian is. Gender non-conforming folks are so important to our lesbian history, and personally, I find it infuriating that a few radical TERFs are allowed to have such a sway and create such a stigma about lesbians because when have we ever allowed bigots to define who we are? We've never allow allowed that and we shouldn't allow that today. Finally, remember that icons of our gay community should be held to higher standards. I'm not making this video just because of internet discourse. I'm making this video because someone who is considered a gay icon publicly said that lesbian felt like a dirty word. And that made my stomach drop. It just made me sad and it hurt. Because JoJo has been described as the face of young people in the LGBTQ, LGBTQ community, I feel like they have such a sway, such a voice, that actively continuing the stigma towards lesbianism, actively continuing the stigma towards lesbians, needs to be called out or called in. Whatever term you want to use, we shouldn't be afraid to say, hey, here's some gay history. Lesbians love you. <laughs> we, we lesbians have fought side by side with our family to exist as proudly as you have. And just a heads up, it's LGBTQ+. You can say, oh, 
the L in the acronym it seems like a dirty word, seems like an unfriendly word, is a weird word, but it's still there because lesbians are always going to exist. Why would you call someone who exists in the community a dirty word? Because we're always going to be here even if you never identify it as us. And you never have to, by the way. You can always identify as pansexual or bisexual or queer. No one's asking you to be a lesbian. We're just asking for you to respect us and not to perpetuate bias, especially publicly. You can think, I hate that word, without saying that out loud, knowing that that bias is going to be repeated and passed on to younger queer kids and even lesbians. Because I guarantee there are kids watching you and looking up to you who are lesbians and who feel that shame and that internalized homophobia that maybe I'm not a lesbian. Maybe I shouldn't tell my mom and dad I'm a lesbian. Maybe I should try to be bisexual or pansexual or just say queer. And as someone who felt that shame, it is no fun because I'm not just queer. I tried to be something other than lesbian and it didn't feel good. Let's be proud of all members of the community. Let's love every member of the community and respect each other equally. Thanks for watching. I'm Liz. My camera's about to die and I'll see you later. You have reached a number that has been disconnected or is no longer in service.